Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. And for those of you who are regular viewers of my channel, you might be able to tell that my voice is a little hoarse today. I'm just getting over a really bad flu. So sorry I didn't release any new videos last week, but I've been in bed all week. So let's get back to it. And today we're going to talk about the previous control property in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Dennis in Burnsville, Minnesota, one of my Platinum members. Dennis says, I have a form with 15 different values on it that I have to adjust from time to time. I want to make little buttons to add or subtract from these values, but is there a way I can do it with just one set of buttons instead of having to make buttons for every text box? Maybe click on the box and then the plus or minus button. Now what Dennis is talking about is something similar to what I cover in this video where I show you how to make a date field and then you can make little buttons underneath it to go like plus or minus a day, right? Plus or minus a day, plus or minus a week, change it to tomorrow, to yesterday, whatever. But what he's saying is he's got a form with 15 different values on it and he wants to be able to go plus or minus on those different values, but he doesn't want to make a different set of buttons for all of those 15 values. Can you just like click on the box and then click on the button, right? Something like this, like I got in the slide here, right? You got, I, I just put six different values on here. You click on value two, then you can click on plus, 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 or minus, minus, minus. You click on value five, then you click on minus, minus, whatever you want to do. This way you don't have to have a separate set of buttons for each one of these controls. To do this, Microsoft Access needs to know what was the text box that you were just on previously, right? That's called the previous control, and there's a property for that, and I'm going to show you how to read that in today's video. This, of course, is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, it means you're gonna need to know some VBA. And if you haven't watched this intro to VBA video before and you wanna learn how, it's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. So go watch this and then come on back. All right, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And let's say you got a form here with a bunch of controls on it. I got three controls here that are numeric controls, right? I got family size, customer sense, credit limit, and I can add one or minus one to any of these values and you know they're just numeric values so it'll go up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a set of buttons here so that I can add one to whatever the previous control was. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's first start by adding our buttons. And you know what, I'm just gonna copy these buttons right here, right? Control C, Control V, move them down here. All right, we'll make this my plus one button. And we'll make this my minus one button. And I'll name this guy, let's call it the uh, plus one button. And this one will be the minus one button, okay? All right, now let's start off by seeing exactly what this previous control property is. Before we do that, there's another property I wanna show you called active control. All right, so let's click on this button here Right click, go to build event, that'll bring up your code builder. All right, here I am in the private sub plus one button click. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I want you to come in here, type in message box, screen dot active control dot name. All right, now active control is whatever control on the form, right, on the screen here back here, has the focus, that's the active control. And I wanna see what its name is, its name property. All right, so it's, it's in the screen collection, the active controls, whoever currently is you're working with, right? Whatever you're clicking on and show me its name. All right, save that, come back over here. I'm gonna close my form and reopen it. Click the button, boom, and it's plus one button, right? That's the active control, that's the button I just clicked on and that's its name, okay? It's name property. now. Active control has a whole bunch of cool things you can do with it, but that's not the property that we need for this video. I just wanted to show it to you so you know that it's there. I got a whole nother video coming out on some cool stuff you can do with active control. But what I'm really interested in is the one that I clicked on before this guy. And for that, I want previous control. All right, screen previous control. So save that, come back over here. Now I'm gonna click on family size and then click on this button. And look at that. It knows that the, the control that I clicked on before this one was family size. All right, if I click on notes and then last name and then click on it, 
Look at that, last name. So it knows who I was on last. Okay? So knowing that, now I can change the value of that field. Right? I can come in here now and say, all right, instead of message boxing that name, I'm going to say take the screen.previousControls.value and set it equal to screen.previousControl.value plus one. See that? All right. Save it. Come back over here. I'm going to click on family size and then hit plus one. Look at that. Now it's three and four and five and six and seven. And it will remember that value unless you switch to a different control. Now, this is where we have to be careful if we start using the second button. All right, let's get the second button going now. You ready? This is the minus one button. Right click, build event. We're going to do something very similar. All right, let's get these two together, in fact. In fact, I'm just going to delete this code we don't need so it's not messing up the screen here. All right. So here's the plus one button. I'm just going to copy this, right? Stick it up in here. And the minus one button is going to do the same thing, except it's going to subtract one. Okay. All right, so come back out here. Let's close this. Save changes. Yes, open it back up again. All right, I'm going to click on family size. I'm going to hit plus one. All right, it's working. Now I'm going to hit minus one. Meh. Object doesn't support this property or method. What was that? What happened? Why can't I do that? What is the screen not previous control? Well, if you think about it, what did I do? I clicked on this. Then I clicked on this button, and that added one. That's fine. Now, at the moment that I click on this button, the previous control is now going to be that button, right? And command buttons don't have values. So you can't change the value of it. So there's a couple of things you might want to do. First thing is to prevent this from happening to your users. You might want to put an on error resume next in here. That way, if they do try doing this with a control that doesn't have a value, they're not going to get that error message, right? But that doesn't help you as a developer. Right, because now if I do something like this, plus, minus, 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 I can't figure out why it's not working. Well, to fix that, all we have to do is, when we're done clicking on this button, just put the focus back where it was. Right? So when I click here, add the value, add one to it, and then just put the focus back there. So if I do click on the minus button, the previous control was also family size. So we'll come in here, and we'll say screen dot previous control dot set focus. We're going to move the focus back where you were. All right? And then we'll copy that and we'll put it down under this one. And we'll save it. And you guys don't hear me. So I got to pause the video recording every couple minutes to sniffle. I'm still getting over a cold. <laughs> All right? Debug compile once in a while. Debug compile once in a while. I got to make a t-shirt about that. All right? And now I can go plus 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 minus minus minus. See that? I can click on this field. Minus, minus, minus. Remember with dates, right? Plus one is plus one day, minus one day. Same thing with currency values. Same. Pretty cool stuff, right? Each whatever field you're on. You can do all kinds of stuff. I used to use this for um for you could you could do it with spell checking. Like if you got a field here, you can click on this field, hit a button, it'll launch the spell check just for that field. Uh, you can change the properties of these fields. You can make things get bigger and smaller with these buttons, right? And you, whatever field you happen to be on, make it size bigger and smaller. All, all kinds of stuff you can do with this. If you want to learn more about stuff like this, uh, screen.active control, previous control, screen.active form, all that stuff is covered in my Access Developer Level 25 class. Got lots of other stuff too, by ref and by val is covered in here, active form and control, passing controls between forms, all kinds of cool stuff. So that's it for today, folks. A nice short one for today. Like I said, I'm getting over a cold. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be better. I got lots of stuff coming. Uh, while I was in sick in bed, while I was sick in bed for a week, I made all kinds of notes and and I got all kinds of cool videos planned for for coming up this week. It's just a matter if I can get them recorded or not. So uh, that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'm off to find a bowl of chicken soup. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video.
to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. 
In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.